Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and welcome back to Let's Play Grounded. This is episode 12. Last time we went into the Haze Lab and we fought a pretty tough infected ladybug. We also found out that Dr. Tully apparently started suffering some nasty side effects of playing around with raw science. He was getting all pruney. And his wife and kids left him for a couple weeks and presumably he disappeared in that time. And that's why there is no one here maintaining the yard. Now before we go down towards the pond lab, I'm gonna head over and talk to Burgle so we can turn in that chip from the red anthill as well as the super chip that we picked up in the haze lab. And that should get us some handy new recipes. Also, I made myself a set of the Koi Scale armor. Originally I had said that, eh, it pretty much is the same as our ladybug armor. But the reality is, it has the same defense as our ladybug armor at level 5, while this is completely unupgraded. So I was like, okay, maybe we should actually make this. And then I looked at the set bonus. So each individual piece makes it easier for you to block with the uh, perfect block here. So it should be very easy for me to parry now. And the set bonus for having all three pieces is that you do a whole bunch of damage after, or no, I think you actually reduce their defense after a perfect block, so we can do a big hit afterwards as a repost. Also, it counts as light armor rather than heavy armor, like the ladybug armor, so it will actually uh, make our stamina regenerate faster. Now the downside to that is that on top of the actual defense stat, the armor has a damage reduction percentage attached to it, so heavy armor I think is like 25%, but light armor is only 10%, and I assume that's calculated before it actually takes your defense into account, so it just reduces that much damage from the hit completely, and then the defense determines how much it mitigates it. But generally, it is better than our ladybug armor, so I scraped up a whole lot of bones off the bottom of the pond in order to make it, and scales. But we're still going to switch over to the fin flops, and I also made a bubble helmet as the Koi armor does not actually make you breathe any better underwater. I think it was originally meant to be a straight upgrade for the underwater stuff, but now it is kind of a side raid and is just as useful on land. So I think this is the armor we're going to stick with until we get to the desert, where we're going to want to switch to a desert mitigating armor. And where's Virgil? Virgil, we need a chat. To see a friendly face around here. Really, the only face. There's no bugs in here. How can I help you? And today? bugs don't really have faces. Okay, let's give them the shitty chip first. Ah, more chips. Thank you. I don't know what this one unlocks. I hope one of them is bandage plus, because we could really use some better bandages. Get it over and let us see what I can remember. Hmm, much better. Check the ASL terminal science shop for the new recipes. Also, we should ask him about the dream we had about being shrunken down by Ominent. I'm afraid Dr. Tully did not program me for dream analysis, but I will do my best. Was it perhaps about electric beef? I have always wanted to have that dream. Do robots dream of electric beef? Why don't you describe your dream for me? I was shrunk in an Ominent facility. I mean, that's pretty clear. You can hear this fungus exploding in the distance. If we're very unlucky, we can get a good look at a nightmare made manifest before we head over to the pond. Aha! That confirms it! There are two spacers, just as Dr. Tully surmised. One in the yard and one at Ominent. So even though they treated his technology as a failure and didn't do anything with it, they still kept the blueprints for it and built their own. He had a hunch that they continued his work on the spacer after he stopped working for them. It all computes! I do not believe these are just dreams. These are surely your memories. But perhaps they only return to you as dreams. I mean, it's a little too specific to be a dream. So, Ominent shrunk you, and now you are here. Hmm. My assumption is after we give him the next super chip, when we go to sleep again, we'll have another dream. I am pretty sure you are not an Ominent secret agent. I was JKing. That was a test. You passed. Burgle, this is 1990. Nobody knows what JKing is yet. 
So if you are not an ominent agent, he truly is from the future. Children? Surely I have no idea. Yet another puzzle for us to solve. I mean, my guess is that the scabby that we're wearing is also, you know, tracking everything we do, gathering data for them. On the plus side, your memories must be slowly returning. If you have another dream, please come again. How can I be of assistance? How can I help you today? All right, now let's give him a big chunk of his brain back. I knew I could count on you. Please hold while I update my files. I'm glad it does give you raw science for this too, because then you can usually buy one of the new things right away. Here we go. Processing. Processing. And if we want to upgrade any of our gear beyond level five, we are going to need than ever. one of the super My chips. diagnostic module is now restored. Analysis shows the spacer suffered a catastrophic failure in the embiggening cell. Purgle, did you come up with that name? If only. Sadly, I can only explain its function. The embiggening cell stores and regulates interatomic energy transfer during the spacing expansion phase of the spacer. Put simply, it controls the rate of growth of the subject and prevents overexpansion, which can be quite messy. <laughs> Did Dr. Tully explode something by growing it too large? Tell me more about the gross stuff. Yes. Um, if the subject's rate of growth is not precisely regulated, overexpansion will cause bioorganic subjects, such as yourself, to pop like a gremlin in a microwave. Well, that's at least a timely movie reference that... Pete here would probably understand. Err, scientifically speaking, of course. So what does this all mean? There is both good news and the bad news. Which would you like to have first? Surprise me. All natural flavoring is not, strictly speaking, natural. Now you know. Alright, that's not helpful, Burgle. <laughs> the good news is that I have a spare cell here. The bad news, it is empty. Do we need to put some some big in it? The Empty. Cell must be filled with a special mixture, a cocktail, if you will. Another breakthrough invention by Dr. Tully. Hold, please, while I push the recipe for the embiggening cocktail to your scabby. Are we gonna need like a bunch of bug parts to make this? Processing. Processing. I decided that I would juice the local wildlife in order to make my embiggening cell. Error. Missing directory. The directory you attempted to copy does not exist. Boo doo doo, boo doo doo. Cheese and fries. It appears the formula for the embiggening cocktail is not in my memory. It must be on one of the remaining super chips. We will need that recipe in order to fill the embiggening cell and send you home. I'm gonna say that that sounds like a pretty important step towards actually finishing the game. I am sorry. It seems like the forces of nature are trying to keep you in this yard. But I believe you are here for a reason. Hold on to the empty cell for me, and when you feel ready, retrieve another super chip to see if we can piece this puzzle together. Have a great day! Alright, is it... Is it in my inventory? No? I guess we just kind of air quote have it. It's up there at the top right. So I guess it's a quest item. Have to keep things clean, there's experimentation to be done. Oh, that's what those are at the top, right? Those are like queued up messages. Do -do 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 -do. Now, I'm curious if there's a way I can hide the quest log, because, you know, sort of similar to Fallout 76, it's just kind of always there, always cluttering up that corner of your screen. So it'd be nice to be able to temporarily turn it off. I mean, you can turn off the trail markers. There's so many friggin' radials, it's probably in one of those. There's show tutorials, but that's not really what I need. Uh, let's see. Peeper, first person, build markers, inventory crafting map. There's not really a quest tab, is there? There is a quest tab. Uh, I can unpin them so that they're not always up there. 
Like this one and this one we don't need because they're not marked anyway, so we won't know where they are until we find them. I'm pretty sure I know where the Toad Swamp is. I think that's over in the flooded zone next to the hedge. And this is obviously on the bird bath, which is also in the hedge, so maybe we should go over there. Because we're going to have to go get that brood mother recipe. But not today. Today is for the pond lab. So now that we're done with Fergal, let's check the new recipes. You can also see here that I spent another milk molar on healing percentage. I don't really know what this does. I just assume it means that all sources of healing heal you a little bit more. And I got that third mutation slot. And you can see the max is five. I also increased the max consumable stack size, so now we can stack ten bandages onto one pile instead of keeping them in fives. Now, here's another quest. Kill orb weavers. We'll take that. Because we're probably going to end up having to kill orb weavers in general. So, advanced production buildings. This lets us make the oven, which is what you need to make the tier two upgrade materials, but you need a separate recipe to actually make those, so even if we can make the oven, we won't be able to make the stuff for it yet. But we're going to need this, so we're going to take that. The sign set is literally just a, a display thing. It gives you more stuff that you can put into picture frames. This thing will tell us if there's raw science nearby, though it won't actually tell you it's raw science. I think it'll still just show up as the same generic thing on the bottom. Zip lines. I want to make this, because at some point, I'm going to need to build a zip line tower that we can use as a shortcut to get around the map faster, but it will require me to spend like three hours building the tower itself. And I think we can use ladders to do that a little faster. I couldn't figure out though how to really build like a ladder going straight up the middle of the tower, so I ended up having to build a stupid staircase around the outside because you can't carry stems up a ladder. So I might have to like build little temporary platforms to jump on so that I can build the next ladder up. It's it's a slow process, but it will save time in the future. Uh, cookbook we don't need yet. Though Larvania does give us critical hit chance, which would be nice. I discovered that the crossbow is really effective against the black ants because one shot to the eyes will kill the little ones. However, it's a little hard to hit them in the eyes. Canteen upgrade, I want that. Because now we can hold more than just two drops in it. Fiber bandage efficiency, also need that. Okay, so it doesn't make the bandages better, it just makes them cheaper. Max stamina. Feather roof, if you want a nicer roof. But again, that's not really a practical upgrade, it's just a visual one. You kind of need the feather roof, though, if you're going to go with the mushroom castle aesthetic for your base, because the other roofs don't really match it. Cookbook Haze, if we want to eat the deadly fungus, or make a spider slider out of spider chunks. Critical hit chance, attack stamina. A peblet turret. Okay, so they did add another defense item. I wonder if I could build one of these next to a mixer. Because so far, our base hasn't been attacked, and I'm not sure it ever will be. But... Being able to do those mixer events with an actual defense cannon would be nice. So we might get that later, but for now, we got what we came for. And we also can't even build that oven until we go up into the upper yard, because the material we need to build it is up there. Alright, let's see if we can find that nightmare I mentioned before we go back to the pond. Because there should be one around here somewhere. I think it's always here. It was always here in the last update I played. Okay, so there's a wolf spider here. Oh, there's a milk molar here, too. Look. We'll have to keep that in mind. I think our time to kill a wolf spider is coming soon, though. Yeah. But if we go in here, you remember that there are two wolf spiders that live in here. Except now, there's also the fungus in here. So guess what happened to those two wolf spiders that lived in here? They're now horrible walking fungus abominations, except they seem to have wandered off. They're not in here right now. So we're going to take advantage of that to steal his quartzite. I can hear one walking around. Like right outside that wall. So I think it's wandering around the outside of the tree. Because they're fungal, they don't respect the, you know, sleeping times. I don't think they sleep at all, actually. Okay, 
Is there any? Ooh, 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 here we come. Let's just take a look before we run the hell away. Because <laughs> I didn't actually get a chance to cover these guys with the video I never did. But yeah, these are probably the most nightmarish of the fungal creatures because they've got the fungus growing out of their eye and the back of them is just exploded open with fungus growing out. I think he can see me. Despite missing an eye. I mean, he's got like six other ones. So I guess he doesn't need <laughs> too many. Let's get a better look at him in the light here. But yeah, look at this fucking abomination. It is horrific. And this was one of the things that was suggested by players. You know, this was one of the creatures they didn't have in mind originally. But then people were like, hey, what if you added a, an infected wolf spider? So they're really cool. But also horrible. We're going to leave before it sees us because... We can't even really take on a regular wolf spider. We probably could now with the koi armor. In fact, we might try that later, but I keep telling myself that we're going to do the pond, and damn it, we're going to do the pond. One of the other things that I unlocked while I was swimming around is a new mutation. The Murteen which you get just from finding three underwater landmarks, and the one that unlocked it was actually one we've already seen. It was the hatch to the pond lab, but I guess we didn't get close enough to actually mark it. Okay. Before we head under, now let's eat one of these aphids before they go bad. What the hell? Oh, I'm in that switch mode again, aren't I? We'll eat that to top up our meal buff. We're going to put on the bubble helmet and the fin flops. Where'd they go? Oh, they're there. <laughs> so we lose out on a lot of armor, but, you know, we don't really need it, because the only thing down here is the koi, which will one-shot us, or the diving bell spiders, which are weak. So we have 177 seconds with this setup. The Mertin gives you a little bit extra air, and the, I think the bubble helmet gives you 160 by default. Oh, I should probably also equip the dagger. So yeah, we're not going to worry about digging up bones or anything right now, because we kind of have all the bones we need. Though I do need a regular supply of scales in order to repair this armor. We're just going to focus on getting into the lab. Grab this jet stream. Alright. We head up to the airlock. You can see that there are three switches. Um, lock. I just don't know what you need to do to actually start opening them. There's like a button or something you need to hit. And yet again, something happened to this lab to explode it. Okay, there's a bunch of material down here. Don't need any of that. There's some bones and scales. Is there air in here? Well, wow, there actually is. Okay. I wish I had known that before we drowned like 18 times, because I was pretty sure that there was no air down here until you actually unlocked the switches. Okay. So we click this, and now we can open those. So this wasn't in the game last time I played. It was more straightforward, and you just hit the switches directly. Ham's test, day one. Initial diagnostics indicate that everything is in working order and ready to begin the Brussels sprout live testing phase using the automated hydroponic, aquaculture, microponics system, or hams, I suppose, going forward. Burgle's task of cultivating the biodime mycelium network seems to have not been a complete failure, and signals are detectable in all extremities. Biodome, operational. Grow nodes, operational. Nitration system, operational. Fungal network, active, surprisingly. Harvesting is typically 90 days out, but initial tests show small sprouts are ready within the span of a week. We'll look to optimize that further, keeping in mind a certain level of structural integrity is required to scale them up to nearly a grapefruit size. So yet again, another experiment he was trying in here. 
Each member of the Tolly family, excepting yours truly, looks at Brussels sprouts, the great cabbage of Belgium, with utter disdain. Within its densely packed leaves, a high-powered nutrient boost in a miniature form factor. And yet mealtime after mealtime, it is recklessly cast aside. Well, so these are arcs, which are tougher than the taser bots, and they can shoot at you. Funny that it doesn't tell me why, though. But I am taking the hint, and I'll keep those brilliant horticulturalists of Belgium one better. You see, these little morsels are a prime candidate for experimentation in my new submersible multifunction lab. A closed-loop system complete with retractable solar dome. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? Dr. Tully, it is almost time for your appointment. Already? Uh, the joys of getting older. Trudy pushed me to go see a doctor after she remarked that I looked like a plate of wet ham. Very well. Mustn't be late and keep Dr. Applebaum waiting. So, helpfully, there is a bed down here. So we can just set our respawn here instead of having to do that trip every time. And there's nowhere to put a lean-to down here, so... Nice of them to add that. Hams, test, day 15. No change from last week, but I feel we're on the cusp of something here, and I've got an idea. I shot awake this morning, sweaty, with a memory of the frenetic energy of fitness infomercials that popped on before the kids' Saturday morning cartoon shows, and in those early hours, being annoyed at the greasy glow of skin stretched tight over bursting muscles, screaming about some new trivial invention, veins bulging with hot blood. But that movement and excitement, that's what's missing. Our wilted petit chou needs to get pumped up. Petit chou? As in, like, chauffeur? With these inspiration, we're moving forward with an admittedly odd Hail Mary procedure for Generation 2, vascular grafting. At the time of writing this, we've already removed the cumbersome stem from the growth process, rendering these auxiliary buds, auxiliary buds, longing for a new system to be a part of. I've had Burgle harvest the appendicular artery off the old jarred appendix, and have been splicing them into the sprout roots, mending the union with a manner of agar glue. The systems of both man and plant are not that different, after all, but could they be this compatible? So yes, he is grafting muscle tissue onto Brussels sprouts. Guess what he called them? Well, it's nice of them to give you this little outpost. I wish I had known that was there, or we wouldn't have fucking drowned last time that we were down here. Water filtration tablets needed. So what kind of goodies do we have here? We got boatman fins. We got tadpole meat that somehow it has not gone bad. We have water flea meat. We got a bunch of lily pad wax. You know, kind of all the stuff you need. A rotten slime lantern. Eelgrass strands. And, ooh, berry leather. That is worth taking just for the amount of effort it would take to get this many berry leather. <laughs> I haven't gone berry leathering it for a while. I guess we don't really need it. For the moment, because we're not using the ladybug armor anymore. So let's get these switches online. Helpfully, they put one directly below the glass so you can see what they look like and go, oh, that's what those are for. Now I should be able to give that a twist. It's actually kind of easier if you play in third person when you're underwater. I know we've been doing first person for the most part, but. Occasionally it is handy. Okay, we know there are Jesus. That sounded like it was in my ear, but he's all the way down here. They look really small compared to when we're in first person. Or this is just a really small one. It is definitely different though to time the blocks in third person. That huge explosion when you pluck them. I mean, killing these guys gives me my air back. So it is kind of worth it. Just wish they didn't swim away after every hit. 
They're a lot more cautious than most other spiders. Probably because they're not like three times your size, like the orb weavers. Switch number two. Anything back here? Not really. There is a little kind of side area off of this cave that we want to go into at some point, but it is absolutely overrun with spiders. Is that, is that a scabby? Can I even get in there? I can't really duck or get smaller. What if I just go around the back? <laughs> Muck. Nope, we don't need the scales right now. I will come back and get those later. For now, we just want to get the switches on. Uh, I don't remember where the last one is. I think it is back here. I mean, I guess follow the cable. Oh, okay, it's under the lab module. I assume we'll get a, an audio log telling us what happened to this one, because I don't know why this one's broken. Okay, it looks like the whole section was snapped off. I should use a bandage. It did actually take a few hits there. All right. There's a milk molar here. I guess the reason that, for a practical explanation for why there's no actual tooth here, it's because the the outer part of the vitamin has dissolved and it's just the gooey core that remains. All right, running out of air. Get back up to the top. Will we make it? Uh, I think 42 seconds is enough time to get just up here. Especially when we can sprint while swimming. Now that this is on, I think we have to go through the airlock. Yeah, we go through the airlock and then we will open the door from the other side. So that wasn't too bad. I expected it to be a little more trouble, like I have for a lot of things so far, but they really have kind of made it more streamlined since the early access. They've made changes that I didn't think they'd kind of bother to make, which is a pleasant surprise. Okay, that's a block. One of these doors is the right one. That one's also locked. This one should be the shortcut. Yep. So now if we die in here, we can just keep respawning in here, which is very convenient. And we're going to put on the real armor. That should keep me safe. So there are some more of those arcs in here and probably some Tazy Ts. Any lore in this room? <laughs> Sniffing for lore. Okay, that's also locked. I remember this lab being fairly straightforward. It's not a lot of, you know, platforming or anything. But then again, I'm pretty sure of the ones I've done... The only one that's really kind of complicated like that is the hedge lab. I mean, I guess they couldn't just make them all platforming or people would get really, really sick of them. So yes, the Brussels sprouts with muscles are just called muscle sprouts. By the power of science, he has made them yoked. You think they actually have like a bicep underneath instead of a root? Yeah. 
Ham's Test Day 36 Generation 7 fitness stable, vascular systems have evolved into something inspirational. Sprout musculature amplification research is going swimmingly. Generation 4 being taught the rhythm of the flesh in a way the fungal networks could transmit was certainly key. Each node is performing in tandem at peak efficiency. Condensed crop cycle manipulation is accelerating generational hybrid evolution at an unprecedented rate. HAMS is proving to be a highly advantageous apparatus. Super dense Brussels sprouts, muscle sprouts, conducting a ripe symphony of proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates via the push and pull of plant and muscle fibers, the applications here for sustainable, humane, omnivorous diets are tantalizing. Notes. Consider an aerobics program for the lab monitor array to increase nitrification and introduce a motivational aspect to growth. Plug data into Burgle's recipe module. Finally, something we can share a common bond over. I bet Burgle can make a mean muscle sprouts burger. Okay, marble shards. Hmm. Well, there's the main switch, and that should open up the other doors. We just have to get to it. I assume there will be more spiders in here. Oh yeah, we gotta go down and out. Uh, I will keep... I will keep my helmet, but I will leave the leg armor on instead of the fin flops. We don't really need to swim that fast when we have this much air through a small area. I'd rather have the protection. I can hear them. Are they down here? No, but there is a scabby down there. Probably don't need my shovel underwater. Or my hammer. Something I've noticed is that increasing the level, you know, upgrading the tools, because it makes them do more damage, they do actually break resource nodes faster if you upgrade them. So it is worth doing for more than just the extra durability. Ginger Spice. That's the way to go. I just want to grab a gulp of air before we go all the way in. And I guess I need a sip as well. This is why I wanted to upgrade my canteen, because we're already out of water now, so... At this point, if we need more water, we're going to have to leave, which I really don't want to do until we're done the lab. Where's that spider at? Hmm. Maybe they are just really mini ones down here. And it was just the one blocking our way. I didn't even really need to do any of that stuff. Dr. Applebaum has pronounced me in perfect health. For a man 20 years my senior, I must face the facts. The gray hairs, the wrinkles, they are not figments of the imagination. I can draw only one reasonable conclusion. It is the elusive fractional errors of the shrinking process which are the cause. Trudy has asked that I discontinue my experiments, but what choice do I have? If I quit now, I will have nothing. What will I be other than a failed inventor and scientist with no discoveries to his name, unable even to teach the basics of physics to a gaggle of hormonal teenagers? No. If this means that I must sacrifice 20 years of my life, then so be it. So she wasn't just, you know, threatening to leave because he was spending too much time on his work. She left because it was literally killing him. Okay, so we open up the doors, but we still need to get into the biodome where the super chip is. 
Muscle Sprouts Test Kitchen. Results for Dr. Wendell Tully prepared by Burgle. Ingredient Assessment. Test samples are currently 0.833% of target production size. Complex and somewhat tense muscular nugget. Several flaps overlap to protect a central organ, all entirely edible. An innate sense of fitness and survival compels them to fight against preparation. A smack of the spatula calms them right down. Initial recipe module analysis indicates use as a replacement for dry-aged beef liver. Unexpected! Compiling flavor profile compatibility. Results, onions. Ugh. The meaty Brussels sprouts that taste like onion. Alright, now we gotta remember where all those other doors are. This is just a tasty tea. Now, we shouldn't be using the sword because I think they're resistant to slashing. Really, I think we want a blunt weapon against these guys. Or perhaps the uh, hammer? Ow. I'm surprised they give you the same amount of raw science as the regular Tazy Teas, though. Alright, let's uh, look at their card. I don't know where the robots go. I guess under angry. Weaknesses, busting, salty, sour. Yeah. Resistance to chopping, stabbing, and slashing, so let's just hit him with the hammer. That'll work well enough. I gotta actually equip it, though. Ugh. Their block timing is completely different from the bugs, because they're very slow, and then they hit you. And as I've said before, I have more trouble blocking long wind-ups than I do quick ones. Thankfully, there isn't too many of them in here. And there's a lot of healing items. Yeah, there we go. One good combo will take him down. You just gotta get that third hit in. Resource analyzer here, but we don't have anything new. Uh, that tadpole is about to go bad, so I'm Just gonna eat it. It's a food powder. They give you a big chunk of health back. Camera is offline right now. We gotta find a switch in here to turn this place back on. Add this to our scan range. Taking a look. Trudy two. Who you can see is the koi. Missing an eye. I think somewhere around here it will tell us what happened to the koi. I remember that. Ham's test, day seven. Nominal results not even marginally different from initial pretest run. Nitrogen cycle levels remain optimal and the local fungal network appears robust. Brussels sprouts seem Slightly loose and fairly limp. They need something to promote growth, but I can't put my finger on it. Other phalangeal observations. Trudy finds her ring better suited for the koi pond substrate than her hand. Or did she throw it in there, or did she drop it in there? <laughs> Notes. Work on making calls to the house. Tell Burgle to fish that ring out of the pond, which he never did. The fishwife's ring. It sank to the ground and sparkled by light was lost and then snarfed, a sunk koi's bite. Her big wiggly mouth, a glistening thing, it swallowed up whole, that glittering ring. Twin barbels flicker, her fins did flap. It appears she was choking, her dorsal I did slap. Hurled to the beyond, the ring was now free, as well as one eye, which then winked at me. How does an eye wink if it's not in an eye socket? Are you my wife now? asked with my heart's big and true. 
Up gurgled her response. Aye, it's your fish wife. Me name's Trudy too. So yeah, the koi tried to eat the ring when she dropped it into the pond. He gave her a good smack so she stopped choking. And he uh, smacked her so hard the eye came out. Alright, this, I think, is the pond hatch, Science. which we did see before. That's the shortcut that leads out into the middle of the pond. It was locked before, but now that the power's on, it should be open. We should also be able to get into that little outpost over there. Alright. So, we're almost done with the pawn lab. There's not really a boss here, as far as I remember, or a mini-boss. Kind of making sure that we didn't miss any lore. I think we got everything. Open all the chests. Let's head up here into the dome. Where the muscle sprouts wait. There's a the super chip. Reboot the pond. Heck of an engineer to be able to build something like this. I mean, it is pretty cool. And we also reactivated the <laughs> fitness routine for the muscle sprouts. So, we can take these. And they actually function as another potential base for making smoothies. I can't remember exactly what they do. I think they make them heal you more, which is why I'm remembering using the smoothies as a healing potion, is because these actually make them worth healing with. And these will regrow here in the pond lab every day or two, I think, so you can come back down here and stock up on more. This time you've gone too far, Wendell Tully. You've done the unthinkable, trespassed the unforgivable, you missed Thanksgiving dinner. Who can blame Trudy? I know that I pushed Oh yeah, and they also hurt you when you eat them. Grit her teeth and born it. She told me that she could not bear to watch me destroy my life, let alone hers, the children's, in single-minded pursuit of this technology. Never in all the years of knowing her has she given me such a cold, immovable ultimatum. My science or my family. But if only she could see. I am doing this for them. I understand it has been hard. It has been harder on no one more than myself. If only I had more time. If I could just prove to them the wonders that are so, so close now, they would understand, wouldn't they? And if they did not, perhaps they never understood me at all. Now I wonder, can I actually... No, it won't let me clip through the wall. So if I wanted to do the thumbnail that I wanted to do, I'm going to have to use UU, U, Unreal, Universal Unreal Engine Unlocker, which is a, a separate tool that links into any Unreal Engine game, and for this game, it more or less is to use console commands to go into a kind of free cam mode. But yeah, we got the dome open, which is pretty cool. And that's pretty much the pond lab. It's a fairly straightforward affair once you get the bottom door open. Now, before we head back, there is one more thing I want to do. I mentioned that there is a little hidey hole tunnel down there, and I would like to go for that now instead of later, because I don't want to have to come all the way back down here just for that. Why is it so sloshy in here, even when it's not wet? Alright, now I'm not 100% sure on where this is. It's kind of over here somewhere. There's a tunnel, like, tucked away on the back wall. So we're gonna have to, like, follow the sound of the spiders. I hear him. OK. 
Okay, we just need to find a hole, basically. A spooky little hole full of spiders. Not these ones, though. Is it this hole, or is this... This might be the other way in. You know, we, we passed the... Yeah, the entrance here. Which I've never actually gone through, so I didn't know where this connected, and that's why I didn't go down this way. So this is not where we want to go. Go up for air. Hello, boatman. Ow, hole. It actually did a lot of damage. They may not have a lot of health, but they still hit pretty hard. Alright, this lantern is about to run out, but we do have another one. Kind of rather not have to use it, though. I'd rather just find this damn hole. Is it down here? Nope. I was pretty sure it's, like, directly behind one of the lab modules. Man, the oak tree roots come all the way down here. But I guess that's not surprising. They go pretty deep. Maybe it's on the other side, and I'm just remembering it wrong. No, because this is where the button is, and it's definitely not over there. It is, like, right behind this thing. I didn't notice that they have those, like, yellow bands on their joints. Okay, where the hell is the thing? Gotta be here somewhere. In this little back area. Oh, but it's not gonna be easy to spot. Though I think it should have roots covering it? I've only done this once before in the early access. Go back here, so... I don't remember it very well. Under here, maybe? No, this is just a place to die. Maybe it's behind a bombable rock. I don't know if you can use broppers underwater, because I don't remember if they ever really come up. Okay, what about over here? Kind of back in this corner. I've definitely swum, swam into this area before by mistake. I might have to look up where it is, because I don't remember. Hmm. Well, anyway, I guess we're going to wrap up in a moment because we accomplished our main goal for this episode. And that means we only have one more lab of the original set we were told to go look for. And that's the Black Ant Lab. And after that, I don't know what the other labs are because I haven't seen any of the ones beyond that. Head out here. I think we can go into the hatch. I'm going to try that before we head up, because it's like right across from us. I do like this geodesic dome, though. I mean, I kind of just generally like geodesic domes. I keep toggling the HUD to take a photo, but you don't actually need to. It doesn't show up in the photo. 
I haven't mentioned this before, but I do actually appreciate that there are a bunch of different combat themes in this game, depending on what is trying to kill you. Like, this is the kind of bloop bloop track for water fleas or other small, not particularly dangerous enemies like the spiderlings, but then the spiders have their own track, stink bugs. There's a bunch of different tracks that immediately tell you what is coming after you and how concerned you should be. So will this open now? Yes, it will. Okay. What have we got in here? It's all flooded. Hmm. Assistant manager key card. Well, the assistant manager is a robot. Located in one of the labs, but he didn't drop a key card before. Actually, no, he did, didn't he? Yeah, he drops a key card that lets you open uh, the doors to the black ant lab. So, spoilers, there's a, a robot called assistant manager in the black ant hill lab. So I did a video on him as well, I think. Or at least a video that he showed up in. So that's not too much of a spoiler if you watch those <sighs> other ones. Alright. Our adventure is done. Uh, I guess we could go back and hand in the chip to Burgle, but would that like mess up the dream? Would we skip a dream and go to the next one? I guess we'll just wrap up here. I won't turn in the chip yet. I'll go back to base so I can turn in all this crap in our inventory, and then I will wait until night so that I can start the next episode right when we go to sleep. That should work out. So, thanks for joining me for another episode of Grounded. I hope you enjoyed our little pond adventure. Next time, I'm not really sure what we're going to do. We'll hand in the chip to Burgle, obviously, but... I guess we might want to make a, a trip back over to the hedge to pick up the stuff we missed or couldn't get before, including some of the milk molars. So, until then, you folks all take care.